All right, good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Traffic and Trade Group, and it is Tuesday, December 27th, and this is your end-of-day market recap. Risk disclaimer in front of you, or somewhere in front of you, there it is. Um, please read this whole thing here, but everything that we're talking about is for information purposes only, not giving out any recommendations or advice. So um, I was out a good portion of the day, um, but I wanted to kind of um, just wrap up with an end of day video because I think that, um, you know, there's definitely some takeaways from what we're seeing um, with this price action. And as we head into this year, I think it's a, it's a great time to be reflecting uh, at some of the, you know, at some of the themes and, and some of the, the behaviors of this market and, you know, what you want to see basically once we get into 2023 in order to um, deploy more risk, right? If you've been a member of Tribeca Trade Group, um, you know that, um, you know, over the weekend and basically over the last month uh, or so, and, 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 and a lot of 2023 just have not been an, an aggressive year, you know, in terms of like not putting the pedal to the metal, really kind of, you know, taking your foot off the gas pedal and just, um, you know, understanding what type of market that we're in, which is a bear market. And, um, you know, as we get to the end of this year, you're going to hear more and more predictions about what people think are going to happen this year. Oh, the market's going to sell from the beginning of the year. Then it's going to go up after, or there's going to be, you know, an X amount, you know, 20% correction, like, or the market's going to, fit, you know, so you could go on and on with these predictions. And really at the end of the day, uh, you know, and I, I'm saying this because I've been doing this for a long time, but really nobody knows, right? Um, just as we go, as we you know go back to 2022, um, I, I don't think that there was it, it's I don't think that there was very many good predictions about how the year was going to go um, back then, and because there's just too many there's too many different things that um, can take place over the year, and that can kind of change things significantly. So. Um, right now, if we want to talk about the price action very quickly, um, we did start the day positive. You know, futures were up. And again, it seems like um, more often than not in 2022, that's inviting selling, you know, sellers to kind of come in and take advantage of the uh, of the market being up. So we're sitting here um, right at the bottom of the valuary and uh, the valuary for December, right, using volume at price. And we only have, this is the last week of the year. So this is it. Um, what we're going to be doing once we um, do start the new year is we're going to talk, we're going to be having a webinar uh, for Tribeca Trade Group members talking about what the valuers are telling us, um, you know, going into the new year. And we did this last year, which I think was a really good exercise. So, you know, that's kind of the, some of the only predictions that I will make is basically what the charts are telling us, right? And what the price action, um, you know, you know, along with, um, what the the valuers are telling us, you know, we'll be able to extract some conclusions away from that, and you know, go over some levels to really pay attention to as we begin the year. And one of my colleagues did a, did a tremendous job at uh, at that in the beginning of last year, um, thinking that you know, kind of going over a scenario analysis um, as trading is very much a, you know going through a scenario analysis and understanding probabilities. But um, you know this this was done very well um, in the beginning of the year, talking about how the eighty percent rule could could play out. You know when we were back in here as price moved into the value area. You know we're we're most likely going to start very close to the middle of the value area. So I'm not going to jump to the um, to the conclusions and about some things to look at as we'll be going over multiple indices. Um, but it's going to be a very different look um, starting this year than it did um, last year. So. Right now, um, you know, again, we're we're below all the moving averages, which again should all they they do. Uh, well, not, I don't want to say all that they do, but one of the major things that the moving averages tell you, is, you know, and the shorter term moving averages, in addition, you know, tell you if there's some weakness in the market or strength, um, if the price is above, you know, the short term and the long term moving averages, you have strength. Um, if you're below. Right, you know that you're in a downtrend, and specifically if you're below the five period moving average, you're in a position of weakness, right? And that's kind of where we are right now. We've we kind of went back and forth a little bit last week, but we're just basically clinging on here to the to the bottom of value. And if that gets broken, um, we could see a move, I think, down to 3752 um, based on what volume at price is telling us. 
All right. Um, now, you know, you could go through and each one of these indices kind of tells a little bit of a different story. NASDAQ is the weakest and that is getting very close to this year's lows. So, you know, you may see this index break the lows and maybe head down to down to here because it, it you know, from what we're experiencing right now, and this could change once we get into the beginning of the year and things like tax law selling, which everybody seems to want to talk about as the culprit for what we're seeing right now. But um, I think it also has to do with um, that stocks, especially in the NASDAQ, are still expensive. Um, now, they are coming down, but... Um, you know, again, that that doesn't mean that they're really good buying opportunities yet in terms of that. And of course, looking at what, what we're looking at here, this is the weakest group. Um, and again, I, I stay away from, you know, from, if we're talking about investments and on the long side, I stay away from the weakest groups, right? And I've been adamant about that all year long. Um, IWM, you know, started to outperform a little bit last week, but this is also in a, in a position of weakness below the 200 day moving average, below the 50 day moving average, the 20, the five. All right. So these, these things have to prove it right to, to me. And, you know, I think to you as well, that they're worthy of your money. Right. Again, I talk about this um, from time to time about sometimes you have people trying to sell you why you should be into a stock. Right. I think of it the other way around, like the the, the um, instead of someone selling you on why a stock is so great. Right. The the price actions should be selling you on what's good or what's bad. And right now, the, you know, looking at the S&P, the NASDAQ, the IWM, these are not convincing me that 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 there is something enticing or um, you could use the word exciting too if you want to use that, but they're, they're not worthy of my money yet because they're in such a position of weakness. I don't want to own weak things. Um, and that's what we have here. Now, the diamonds, which has been doing a little bit better, right? I mean, hey, okay, something positive is going on here. At least it's holding the 50 day moving average, right? It's holding the 200 day moving average, right? So this is a little bit worthy of um, me taking a look. And that's why I'm long some things like Caterpillar, right? I want to be long something that, hey, it's got some strength to it is breaking out of, you know, uh, consolidation, right? People tell me whenever I post Caterpillar, oh, there's a recession coming. I wouldn't want to own that, right? Believe it or not, you're not going to know all these things that happen in the news, right? Just because something is going on in the news, that doesn't mean that um, <laughs> that that's actually the truth, right, of, of what's going on. So, you know, in my opinion, pay attention to, to the stock prices and formulate an opinion um, based on what the prices are doing because they're a much better leading indicator than what is on the news and what people are telling you. So, uh, you know, I think this is interesting. You know, who knows? It could be, there could be a number of reasons. Maybe it's China reopening a little bit that's helping this, but it could be something else that we don't know about. Sometimes you don't know about a story or you don't know what the driver was until weeks or months later about what a company was doing and why it was um, such a success. So for now, Right. I'm not making any predictions about where Caterpillar can go, but I know exactly where I'm going to get out of it. Right. And that's trading, folks. Right. Is to to have a signal to go long, which is the break of value. Right. And I've taken some targets all, all along the way. You know, even though it's been such a small move, I've been taking um targets because it's a very right, this market is 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 not on a strong footing. So the more that I see weakness. The more rapidly um, I take targets personally, but hey, you know this would be great if this continues to um, to continue to break out. So I, I like what's going on here. Um, a name that that uh, I put on Twitter last week, which was actually brought to my attention by a, a Tribeca Trade Group member last week, and um, uh, so so this was a really nice looking chart too, which was this TTC, right? Which is Toro also had a up one point eight percent. When, um, you know, a lot of the market was down today. So, you know, of course, I'm going to be paying attention to things like this um, because this is a nice little move, right? It's not extended, right? It spent um, a number of uh, weeks going sideways and it's now looking to resolve higher. So that's a good thing. I mean, again, in a bear market, which is what we're in, you have to be aware that a lot of breakouts fail. Right. And that's why, you know, locking some in, I, I think is important to do. You know, here's my trading blotter for the day, which I show in 
just about every one of these videos. Um, I wanted some exposure to a China name, right? Um, Billy was the name, but I could have, you know, gone, gone a, a couple different directions. Um, regardless, I'm selling a 6% move, right? Um, because that's what this market is telling me right now. That's what the breath is telling me, right? That's what the NICE and the NASI are telling me. When you've got more um, names that are declining versus advancing, right? That's a defensive stance, right? So of course, like even at the end of the day, you know, uh, because I was out most of the day, um, I, I did not get a chance to kind of take advantage of our, um, of the watch list that I put out over the weekend, um, you know, and here's where we've got strength in this market, right? We've got strength in, you know, some small areas of retail, but it's really energy. It's really the industrials. It's really some of the metals and mining that are doing pretty well, some healthcare stocks, aerospace and defense, and um, some insurance names too, right? I mean, that's what's holding up this market right now. And um, it doesn't mean that those areas are going to hold up the market forever, and that's why you have to pay attention, right? And, and set alerts and monitor your positions. Um, but that's what it's all about. So, you know, I'm excited for, for the new year. Uh, I've mentioned I am, I've um, entered into the, to the, to this year's U.S. Investment uh, Championship. Um, so uh, I, I look forward to that and I look forward to the challenge of this year. Um, I think that this year is going to be wide open. Um, I think that you have, you know, looking at the difference between what's going on in the equally weighted ETF, which is showing a little bit, you know, again, this is rel on a relative basis because this is not strength either. It's not above its 200 day moving average, but on a relative basis, right, the equally weighted stocks are outperforming the, the overall, um, the, you know, the S&P 500. Right. Um, same stocks, but just equally weighted versus a market cap weighted. So this is much better to me in terms of a market. Like, I think that we're getting to the place where the market structure is going to be better. Right? I didn't particularly like, um, you know, uh, when there was just four names that were basically at times over the last couple of years, just holding up the market. Right? That's not a healthy market, in my opinion. Right. Um, it's nice to have market leaders. Right. But, uh, you know, having just three or four name, go to names, um, I, I think that there will be a lot better opportunities than just looking at those fang names and, and throwing in, you know, a couple of the other names, too. So I'm enthused about that. You know, I think one of our, one of my strengths and one of our strengths at Tribeca Trade Group is to find these things, you know, find where the relative outperformance is and take advantage of that and not go after things that are showing weakness and not try to bottom pick things, right? I mean, how many, you know, I was on Twitter uh, over the weekend a little bit here and there, and it was just flooded with messages on Tesla, some some big bears, some big bulls, who cares? I mean, if, <laughs> you know, this is a great rule going back from, from the movie um, Wall Street, right? Don't get emotional about stock. It clouds the judgment, right? And I don't want to be in a stock. Um, bullish bear, you know, bullish bearish doesn't matter, right? In terms of the, the enthusiasm about Tesla, that's one stock. Get over it. Move on to something else. And if you can't do that, if you're that emotional, emotional about a stock, then maybe this isn't for, you know, this isn't for you, right? We certainly saw that in the drama that unfolded back in 2020 with GameStop and AMC, right? And if you've been a regular viewer of my videos, you know that I didn't, I didn't play in that sandbox either. It's just not for me. All that emotion, um, you know, there's better things that you could do with your emotions than, than try to trade stocks. So, um, you know, you could, you know, if you really like, you could bet on football games, right? And do that type of thing. But I don't think that's really suggested either. So, um, you know, here's what we offer at Tribeca Trade Group. We are still offering a half off your first month for new members. Um, I, I think this will be a, you know, I think members that have, that have been, you um, in Tribeca Trade Group uh, for, you know, over the last year, you know, I, I think that they've learned a great deal in terms of staying out of um, these names. And of course, you know, I, I don't do a huge amount of shorting. Um, you know, I just decided that uh, early on this year, I, I would short here and there, and I would use things like SQQQ to kind of carry out my hedges, um, which worked very, worked, you know, very well at various points this year. 
Um, but I, I didn't do, you know, a huge amount of shorting. And again, like just setting your expectations. I will play some things two way. In fact, I actually had a position on thinking that this ELF, ELF might actually break um, and start to move lower, but it, it didn't go that way. All right. So, you know, this is also what you get, you know, at the, at, um, I, I, I send out, you know, all my positions, I send out how I'm doing in, in my positions on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so you could see what my new positions are, um, as well as existing positions. And if I've taken targets and, and real-time PL, this is linked up to, um, Bloomberg API. And, um, I send out a screenshot of, of, uh, you know, how this is doing. Um, and then of course, you know, so that's what happens at the end of the day, but real time, you could see, you know, what the positions are. And I try to provide some, some explanation as well as why we're, I'm getting into them. If, if you're, if you're, uh, if you've been a member for a while, you kind of get used to the setups that I'm looking for, um, you know, such as the Caterpillar or the or the TTC, right? You know, breaking higher out of consolidation. You know, I only will buy the dip in names that are that are in uptrends. I will not buy the dip in a name that's trending down, right? That is a big no-no, you know, in terms of technical trading. Um, so for the most part, I stick to up uptrends. You know, 90% of what I do is um is investing or trading in, in a name that's in an uptrend. Uh, I'm not about doing anything else with names that are in downtrends. Um, the other 10%, if a name has been basing for a long time, right? So like kind of coming out of like a, a, a level one type uh, type stage and going into level two, even though it's not above the 200 day moving average, you may see me take uh, you know a shot at that. But for the most part, I'm staying away you know, from names that are in uh, downtrends and concentrating on where there's strength in this market. All right, guys, that is it. So um, more to come, you know, we'll be putting together like things like, you know, trading. Uh, we've got, we'll have a webinar next week and um, I'll be putting together kind of a, a game plan, you know, with a little bit more uh, rules behind it in terms of what I generally look for during the day and so on and so forth, guys. Uh, so um, have a great night, everybody. Um, again, a very interesting start to this week. But um, is it surprising? Um, no, you know, I, I think, you know, there's a, there's a lot being talked about the seasonality of this week and it is what it is. This is one of the, this is seasonally one of the strongest weeks of this year, but um, it doesn't mean that the market is guaranteed to go up, right? And you have to have a backup plan. All right, guys, have a great night. See you tomorrow.